I need to uh, talk to you a little bit about um, our topic of the day today, uh, starting to talk about set theory. And of course, set theory is all about sets. And <clears throat> uh, by sets, it's, that's a pretty uh, open topic because uh, as I have here on the board, <clears throat> sets are uh, defined to be a well-defined collection of objects called elements, which leaves it pretty wide open. Normally, of course, we're talking about sets of numbers. Um, <clears throat> say I'm talking about the set one through five, one, two, three, four, five, the counting numbers one to five. And so this is our uh, set here. <clears throat> this is the way we'd write that set, or one way we'd write that set, uh, just by listing out the uh, elements. Each, uh, each of these in sets is called an element. And then the little uh, uh, squiggly lines around that, <clears throat> those um, are referred to as a set braces, and that's how sets are designated in set theory. <clears throat> but um, as I was saying, um, sets are pretty wide open. They can be sets of numbers. They can be sets of letters. We could do a set of students, uh, write out that, a, uh, all a set of shapes. Um, really, it's pretty wide open what sets can be uh, made up of. Now, this little term here, well-defined, what we'll try to do is uh, always be uh, well-defined. And by well-defined, we, of course, uh, what we mean by that is it's a set that is, is something that can be reproduced by anyone. Um, <clears throat> for example, if I said the set of counting numbers between um, 7 and 11. Well, so long as you know what a counting number is, you can reproduce that set, and <clears throat> your set would be the same as my set. That would be 8, 9, and 10, counting numbers between 7 and 11. <clears throat> That's what we mean by well-defined. Where you run into some difficulty is, you know, uh, with things like uh, the, these would not be well-defined, the set of good numbers. Your good numbers would be different than my good numbers and somebody else's good numbers. So that's what we mean by well-defined. It's, it's a set, uh, a collection that can be reproduced by uh, anyone. All right, a couple other <coughs> notational items. Um, <clears throat> for names of sets, like if I wanted to name this set um, A, uh, such as uh, give it a name of A, usually capital letters are reserved for the names of sets. So capital A is our set 1 through 5. Now, let's say I do uh, set B here, and B is going to be letters X, Y, Z, and notice there I use lowercase letters. Just a general rule of thumb, it doesn't have to be such, but uh, as a general rule of thumb, uh, uppercase letters for the names and then lowercase letters for our uh, actual elements there. Okay? <clears throat> All right, and uh, also, <clears throat> this is, we were talking about this one earlier, um, another thing to point out here, this is a couple ways, different ways we can uh, do sets. Of course, here we've got our listing way, listing method, and a lot of times that's the way we'll do it. Um, but here is, uh, you know, the word description <clears throat> for our set. So different ways we can um, talk about sets and, and what we mean. <clears throat> um, there is uh, one other method of 
describing sets or <clears throat> and it's kind of a combination of these two things the listing and or the braces and it's called the set builder notation and I mention it here just to uh, for your information <clears throat> set builder notation now let me just give you an example here write it out here and I'll tell you what it all means X is a uh, counting number Uh, greater than 10. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, this is set builder notation. We got the set braces, but then we ha kind of have some, uh, we got a description, but then we've kind of got some other funny notational things here. The way this is read, it's the read the set of X, so that's kind of uh, gets us started here, the set of X, and then this vertical bar here in this case uh, you can read that as such that and then X is a counting number greater than 10 okay so it's just a little <clears throat> bit of notation sometimes you'll see it sometimes this book will use it um, but uh, just just so you know what what it all means okay now another point Let's kind of uh, play off of that. So we're talking about which set? The set of counting numbers uh, greater than 10. Well, that would be starting at 11, 12, and 13, and then <clears throat> everything thereafter. Um, <clears throat> so we get wind up with this infinite set. So let me make a quick point about uh, infinite and then another term here. Yeah. There's uh, some sets will be infinite, and matter of fact, some sets can be infinite in uh, a lot of different ways. Um, this one just keeps going to the right there, so <clears throat> but that's obviously infinite. Now, the other sets I have up here, for example, this one, not so much, not so much infinite here, and uh, and so there's another term there associated with those, those that um, have a start and a stopping point. Those are called finite sets. So a finite set is a set that has a starting point and an ending point. Infinite sets may have a starting point and don't have an ending point or may, uh, may not have either one. They may go out infinitely both ways, but a finite set has both a start and a stopping point. So yeah, if you <coughs> did ask about finite or infinite, that's finite just is uh, kind of the opposite there of infinite, where you, where you do have a starting and a stopping place. Okay? All right. <clears throat> um, one other... Uh, quick mention... Uh, of a notational <clears throat> thing with sets. Uh, back to the elements here. <clears throat> Let's say A is one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> um, this this symbol here is uh, you see that a lot in set theory. And what that means it means or is read is an element of. That's what that symbol means here. So one is an element of A. Two is an element of A. Three is an element of A. So we could write all those out. But yeah, if you see that little symbol right there, it just means is an element of. <clears throat> now, if we get a, a number, such as five here in this case, five does not belong to set A, so therefore, yeah, you just um, denote that as uh, element with the, 
the element symbol with a slash through it. Five is not an element of A there, we would say.